We're all on board? All right. We're getting right into it. Um, first thing on our agenda is approving our minutes, so I would entertain a motion from one of my two colleagues. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. All right. Thank you very much. Let's move into the 300s. I have a handful of notes, nothing too crazy. I don't know if anybody else has any. Um, <coughs> Please forget all that stuff. Start doing nice stuff. <laughs> well, I'll start. <laughs> I just want to get done. <laughs> I know, we see. All right. So on 301 1 and 303 1, and I think it's 306, they all say assistant superintendent. And we should probably change them to be yeah. deputies. Um, I think. I think that's what's on those three spots. And I wrote something else down for, actually, I think 301.1 and 303.1 are the exact same policy. Administrative positions, and what was the other one? 301.1 and 303.1, I yeah, think they're exactly the, exact the same. same. Yep. So, one of them should go away. Well, that's weird. Yeah. Their list is kind of ordered different. Like athletic directors, deans, is all It's of just the, same the spacing line. on it. But yeah. The text on it is exactly yep. the same. Yeah. So one of them should go away, and I don't really care which one it is. Okay. But the on the one of them that's left behind, and then the 306 should have the deputy superintendent. Um, also on 306 has. Chief Operating Officer, do we still have that title? No. No, we don't. Right? No, no you're. <laughs> I just usually use. So all I don't know what because it just has. Yeah, we can edit that one accordingly. Yeah, yeah, just whatever. I don't know how many you need in the succession. There's only two there, but the first one should say Deputy Superintendent. Maybe it's plural <laughs> or something. I don't know. However best you want to do that. Um, what else do I have? A few other really little ones. <clears throat> Isn't 307 going away too? Isn't that a good thing? Is that the I thought that was communication channels? The I think it is. I think that was in the policy primers that it was getting. Yeah. Which one are you talking about? 307? <clears throat> yeah. Yeah, I believe so too on that one. I believe that is correct. Okay, what do I have? I have a few things around. Um, Superintendent evaluation, so 302.5. I'll go down my little note. It's all the way down on the, on the third page. The, the first paragraph talks about when the superintendent uh, discussion, evaluation discussion is in closed session upon a request and if the board determines that it will needlessly irreparably injure. Is it? Should it be an and or is it an or? And I ask that because you can ask for it, but if we say, nope, it's good, you don't get to have it in closed session because it's not going to hurt you, that seems weird to me. That? But with, with an and there, it makes it, you have to. Say, isn't that probably that might be, right from, it is that right might be the is actual it? language of the statute. I don't know that doesn't answer your question about what it means, but I think that might not be on the code is actually. It seems very restrictive <coughs> to have an and there to me. But. No, I, I think it's, yeah, I see what you're saying. Because. We just always we done always them do in closed it session at request, right? And there's never been that caveat to you know what was going to happen there. So that one stood out to me. But if the language is the language from. Yeah, we can check on I the can language. Look at that. Oh, <coughs> so. 
pulled accordingly, but. Because if we put or in there, it's sort of the same. Yeah, it's still the same problem. Mm -hmm. Right, still the same problem. The super can be like, no, I don't want a closed session. But the board's like, oh, no, we're going to have a closed session. Well, I think it should be that way, though. <laughs> right? Like, like, if we're going to air some dirty laundry, I, I think we should have the ability to do that in closed session. I don't know what. Let's just check the language. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's almost like the initial, like to talk about what we're talking about. The may needs to go to a will. If if that's what we're trying to avoid, right? Is the board will discuss its evaluation of the superintendent in closed session upon a request from the superintendent. The and is still problematic. There, we'd have to do some with the language after there, but. I mean, it, yeah, I, it's, I, it's next to impossible, I think, to probably have a true evaluative <coughs> conversation without yeah. doing that second part. So I think mm -hmm. that's where we just want to confirm what the language is. And I think if you could change it from shell to may at the beginning, that kind of covers your bases, too, if that's something you could do. Right, that's what I was saying. Yeah. Know, the will or the shell, yeah. That may be a better way to do it. Okay, along with that, on the... 025 G1, which is also on the evaluation process, and I don't know that we are going to hammer it out today, but the the calendar of events of when everything's happening, I think we've kind of changed things up a little bit in how we do stuff, and so I'd want that to be more reflective of what we're actually doing. Because um, it's pretty explicit there what happens in June and October and February, right? Mm -hmm. I think we need to tweak that a little bit because we are trying to do, I do think we need to have sort of that formal evaluation before the end of the year, but we also are doing a mid-year thing, probably, usually it's in December or maybe January, December, January. to look at yeah. stuff, so maybe we can hash that out as to what the calendar should actually look like, a little offline, but. Yeah, we can make that more reflective of what we talked about. Mm -hmm. Just look at me. I, I, I will get through my, I got two more notes on the 300s, and they're the same note, just in two different policies. <coughs> and maybe this is language that has to be the way it is, too. But in um, 303.2 and 303.5, it says the board will employ principals and administrators, and I think it should be the district will employ them. I'm not employing any of them. And if they're not technically our employee, I mean, the way it's always been sort of written or described, we have one employee. Because I think it talks about the recommendation from the superintendent and other places to the board and things like that. So. It, <laughs> still covers what we actually do. It's just, it seems weird that it says the board will employ them. I just think it should say the district will employ principals and ministers. That seem reasonable? They're looking at the code right now. We're more important than the code. Don't That is all I have in the 300s. Okay, I only have one in the 300s since he took everything else. Um, and I don't know if this is possible with language addition, but as we're having conversations about um, holding people accountable under 305 Administrator Code of Ethics, could we have language in there, that second bullet, that talks about <coughs> fills all professional duties with honesty, integrity, and from a anti-racist lens or something focusing on, if, if this is what we're going to eventually move towards for everyone, why not look at a good starting point with our administrators? Yeah. <coughs> yeah, we could include it on that one, Ruthina, or we could just even do a separate bullet point, you know. Yeah, I mean, I think, I, right, I'm just fine to speak with the to way that, that I think yeah. if that's going to be the message we're sending um, for T 
teachers and staff, we have to start with board right. and administrators. I mean, I would think that if we had an administrator, even on their own personal time, post something wildly racist on Facebook, we would want to be able to. Yeah. <coughs> we would, and, and, and if so, if we cart some, some of that language into As a separate bullet. Because that like separate yeah. paragraph says, failure to act in accordance with this code of ethics in the judgment of the board will be grounds for discipline, yeah. up until including discharge. But I think in order maybe to be able to have that ability, we would need to have some of the language that has been suggested in the code of and not oh, necessarily like Max said, it would yeah. be a separate bullet point of his own. Um, yeah, but somewhere in there. Yep. And yeah, we probably we can don't even... just want to limit it to anti-racist. It we has to be some type everything. of discriminatory. <coughs> yeah. I mean, that was just the first yep. mm -hmm. yeah, word yeah, that yeah. came. I mean, but something that encompasses the whole map. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's what I would suggest is it could be even a little more broad. But in, including some of that terminology to anti-racist, anti-discriminatory, you know, leading with those. Like a moral yeah. clause that they put in other professional contracts. Mm -hmm. But, and I don't think Joe can give us some language. But isn't it different. sort of like, I mean, and I could be totally wrong, but I swear that a teacher that I know talks about a morals clause from the state. So maybe there's some language even there that yeah. There's a moral clause that teachers, once they get licensed, the state sort of send them their code of ethics in addition to whatever districts want. There's a four-page uh, Board of Educational Examiner's Code of Ethics right on the website. That there you go. Because he talked, yeah, but the that teacher I know talks about that. Their principals would be subject to that Absolutely. as well. Okay. So yeah. we can, so pulling language from there should be language they're familiar with. Okay. So it's in, it's in line with what you're saying. So, yeah. Yeah. Great. Thank you. Sean, going back to your question, we didn't want to check with Joe on that change because that language about the board employing, employing the principals is it's in 279.21. That's how this starts. The board will employ principals. Well, I'm like, Athena, my interpretation has always been that the superintendent's the only employee, but that is how the code language reads. It says the school board is the district. But we can check with Joe on whether or not we can. Sounds like I got a lot more power all of a sudden. <laughs> <laughs> I will let them know. <laughs> Lisa, did you have anything from the 300s you wanted to? No, go ahead. So, did you capture everything? I did. Yeah. Are we ready to move on to the student appearance one? Is yes. this the first time we're seeing the the new edits to it? Yep. I didn't uh, pull them up side by side to really highlight all of the differences, but I I went through it. Yeah. <laughs> Laura, Amy, is there any you want to draw out there just to talk to the group about key differences? I feel like your team did a good job of taking the from that last policy and governance committee, Laura. Um, they really, in my opinion, spelled out you know, what it would look like then to do the training aspect. So I, I think the changes came on pages one, two, three, four, back on page four, kind of the bottom half of page four and then the top of page five are where the additions really came. And the enforcement the part? Yeah, just code enforcement at schools. Remember that night we were having a lot of discussion about what does that really look like in mm -hmm. practice. Not seeing anything that stands out as concerning that I would change. So. Yeah, I think like Amy said, it talked about some of the practical application aspects is uh, what the Laura's team worked on there and 
Uh, for example, you know that third bullet that Amy's talking about on page five about remove from a classroom, right, versus the cannot wear and the must wear sections of the dress code, plus the class time should be avoided or kept to a minimum, right? So it kind of, I think, just further detailed out how we do that practically. I think what we talked about was creating some type of um, educational component um, to accompany it with, for the teachers so that they can, you know, like a, some type of presentation so that they can understand that some of this is done case by case. Mm -hmm. That we can help them decide what to I well, feel pretty good about how it's put together. So. Yeah. We're ready to move on? I was just curious, oh, does ahead. other districts have um, a policy that uh, is sort of welcoming, opening? Okay. So, will be a trend center just to get a kid? Yep. And Great. Right, like Oregon. I mean, we know we're like around us. Right. No, no. That's <laughs> what I mean. Like, you <laughs> run it to our loop. I mean, because I, 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 I like the fact that we are allowing kids to be kids and comfortable in what they're comfortable in as long as they're showing up to be ready. Yeah. I want to say what to is similar yeah. because okay. Yeah. Got yeah. it. If, if anybody doubts how important this is, Charlie and I went to that piece on politician thing in North Liberty where some junior college <laughs> students came and talked to a bunch of us local elected officials. And this one girl who's at eighth grade at Clear Creek just talked to us so passionately about how she's continuously regulated because of their dress code policy. She wants to wear a midriff, and the boys get to wear midriff shirts, but the girls can't, and she's, I mean, it was just, she was just so, it was so impactful in her life. Yeah. And to be able to say, hey, it doesn't have to be that way, and you should look at our policy, because these folks have put so much time into it, was, a, I hope it empowered her. I was like, start at the kitchen. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but it really, I think it really matters to me. And so Laura and everyone else who's worked on this, I know it's not me, so everyone who's put all that time into it, I thank you because it's a big deal for them. And, and you know it's a big deal when you have former students taking a look at what their parents are reading as they're preparing for word meetings to say, what? No, I didn't have this freedom to turn it back. <laughs> so good job. You made a former student of our district a little bit jealous. <laughs> yes, thank you for the work on it. Let's go ahead and move on. Uh, looks like we've got some releases in the 403s for vaccination requirements and things. Uh, I don't know if there's a preamble to go with this. I did have one question, but I don't know if there's something you guys want to lead with. Yeah, well, I'll start it off and then let Chase add any other <laughs> detail here. But basically, we'd probably just ask you to hold on this, knowing that the OSHA requirement's been suspended yeah. uh, for the vaccine. So I was gonna ask that too. we thought there was some urgency around getting this in front of you and where it would need to go. Um, but based on the fact they've slowed that down, um, really more probably than tonight, just for informational purposes on what those policies would look like if, if we get back to a point where uh, that rule um, would be implemented in the future. So for now, I don't think there's anything to do other than, again, just kind of have those there for your awareness and make sure that we're on the same page about if that rule comes back, how we would want to implement it. Anything you want to? I think we're just kind of preparing like it's a, a win, not an if. I mean, Biden has now, you know, they, the White House has submitted their briefs about to the Sixth Circuit. So we know that's something that's high on their priority list. And I mean, we don't, We've had a lot of conversations, and I think that we want to be in a position to roll it out in a way that's supportive for employees. It shows employees are options, but also want to pass a policy that's in compliance with it so that we can uh, abide by the federal mandate. We're working with both Joe Holland and um, Mahler's a little bit to gain more information as it, as it becomes available. But um, I think it is more of a, a win than it is to be one day to modify that. <laughs> With that, then the question that I have is specific to the 4037E3, which is the rig religious accommodation form that specifically has on there religious exemptions for face coverings, which we've 
already covered, right, as to what we want to do. Now, I don't know if there's other legal things in there about it. Uh, I, from our, my recollection of the conversation was it's a little easier to put together religious exemptions to the vaccine itself. If you're not taking the vaccine, then it, the order is right. Testing and mass, do you then also have a religious exemption to that part? And I think that's something we're going to have to talk about because we've already said we're not doing a religious exemption for masks. So I'd want to make sure we were consistent there or we're following whatever the rules are. <coughs> so I don't want to well, I think, again, it's a sample form. So my guess would be we would just take off the use of face coverings portion of that and this is just a template form so they're probably just that that would be my suggestion yeah. but i didn't know if there was other rules involved in there because i, I want to say that in the rules there, there had to be a religious accommodation part yeah, we, that was was in there and i but i assumed that was specific to the vaccinations but i didn't know how broadly that that was construed we asked legal and legal said that that exemption wasn't part of what it was saying so that they, they didn't see there being any change we were now going to have to offer a religious exemption for masks. So it really, you know, like you're saying, it would be for the vaccine and the testing. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, other than striking that line off of that form, mm -hmm. I, I didn't see anything. Like, I don't know that we have a whole lot of <laughs> say in what it says, but yeah. I was wondering with OSHA putting a hold on it, whether these needed to go forward to the board or not. I'm no. guessing that's no. Not yet, no. Nope. Any other thoughts on those 400s? 403s, I guess? No, I'm good, please. Can you tell them in a hurry to get done, though? All right. I'm good. Uh, did we make clear, I think it all the way down, did we make clear that if uh, an employee gets an exemption and then falls into the testing pool, that they're responsible for uh, covering the cost of any weekly testing? I think I saw where it says if, if, if you get an exemption to vaccination, mm -hmm. you have to wear a mask and then provide proof of the negative test every seven days. <clears throat> I'm assuming we're not paying for that safety testing or providing it. So I would want somewhere on the form when the employee says, I'm applying for an exemption, a checkbox that says, I understand that it will be my responsibility to arrange for weekly testing and cover the cost of the testing, just so that. Everyone's on the same page. We need to. Yeah, I'm not sure. I don't think we're solid on that. Oh, okay. About who she's going to make responsible for that test. Okay. So I think that's something. That's fine. And then if we have to provide it, then we should just know that and yeah, yeah, then right. make sure well, that we have a place in place to do that. Because we asked our insurance company, and, and that was their initial response was, well, you, know, you can't, if you're requiring testing of your employees, insurance is cover it in mm -hmm. testing, but then I was like, well, wait a second, the only reason we're going to require it is because of OSHA, mm -hmm. and so that's kind yeah. of what we're trying to get some. <laughs> it's not our requirement. So, right. 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 Oh, so uh, I think that's right. the crux of some of these arguments, actually. So we do need yeah. to clarify that in here about who is responsible for that testing. That's, that's a good point, they say. Yeah. Spot yeah. on, Lisa. Yeah. Yeah. Once we get the answer, we'll yeah. write out the answer. <laughs> one one. Anything else on that? That's a good question. Um, our next meeting, so I, I gave some thought on this, and I'll throw this out to the group. Um, so we did this. We have nine series, and we had nine months of school, which includes December. So we're not going to have a second meeting in December for the regular board, and that would be one we would ordinarily have this meeting, which is, I don't know, some crazy yeah. Date between Christmas and New Year's, right? Like the 28th, 28th or something. Yeah. So we have a few different options, I think, and I'll let everybody kind of weigh in. So the 28th, we still could do it, but it wouldn't be my first choice. <laughs> no. um, the third Tuesday is the 21st. It's uh, still getting close to the holidays, but we're not doing an Ed committee, right? No. On that one, so that's open. I would say no. The, the, <laughs> the other, so my two other, I'm, I'm giving them from the worst to the best, I think, in my opinion. Okay. So jump in whenever you think you hear something that sounds good. 
We could do it fairly early. We happen to have five Tuesdays in January. So we have next Tuesday, or in this in November, excuse me. So we have next Tuesday off anyway, because it's the fifth Tuesday of November. And then we have the first Tuesday of January or December that doesn't have anything, so we could do it then. My other thought, and this is where I would really want other people to weigh in, we could just say we're not doing them in December and we're doing the ninth one in June. We're still having board meetings in June, so as our, like as the, our nine series, we can like skip December all the other. So our next one would just be in January. I, I would like the ninth one in June, right, Lisa? Well, I mean, it's not December. Exactly. Well, first of all, well, the December, kind of the December one is, I, I don't like the <coughs> idea because technically the district, like, or teachers and it's students break. are on break, winter break. I don't like, even though you people out here are still working, I don't like the idea of convening and having folks that, no. But I like just we're going to still be working in June. We don't stop working because it's summer. So I say let's just talk it off. Is the new person who signed up to be the third member of PNG want to win? It does, yeah. Just put skip in December. Definitely out of town. Yeah. Sean, one other thing is you, the eight nine hundreds are small. Kim and I were just talking. You could do those together. Oh, see, we could double so, it up in May. And the four hundreds are big. I mean, that's mm -hmm. uh, yeah. So are the and the five hundred. So that just means we'll probably take the whole hour. So what? In order to satisfy our agenda item, is setting our next meeting. The fourth Tuesday in January is our next meeting. Is that, is that what we're all kind of agreeing upon? Yes. And then we can figure out what all is going to be on it. I think uh, for this, our next meeting, as well as any other committee meeting after tonight, um, they should all have a electing a new chair, as we will have new folks being on. So oh, yeah. Just we have to throw that out there now, so don't forget it later. Uh, any other thoughts on P&G stuff? No, but Lisa, thank you for stepping in and being a primary instead of the alternate these last couple of meetings. Yes, thank you, Lisa. You may know that. that I have not signed up for alternate status again for next year. <laughs> that might be the, <laughs> might be the one empty spot, else though. No. It might be the one empty spot on there that so many All right, I'd entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. All right. Thank you. <laughs>